Hello everyone and welcome. 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 Hey everyone. Now in this video, I'll be explaining the purpose of a turbo and how it creates more power. 10 years as of June 24th, 2021, the YouTube channel Engineering Explained is officially 10 years old. Uh, really excited about this. So this started out uh, as something to do in my free time during a college internship the summer before my senior year of college. Uh, I then went on to work for an engineering company company for two years and I kept making videos throughout those three years and eventually quit my engineering job and started this full-time in 2014 and here we are in 2021 10 years after starting still creating content and all kinds of crazy things have happened to me as a result of creating this channel it's been really exciting I've been really fortunate in what I've been able to do because of this channel and it's just it's just super exciting to be celebrating this milestone of 10 years eight 869 videos, over half a billion views, 3 million subscribers. You know, if you take the total number of video views, you divide that by the total number of videos, the average video doing over 600,000 views, uh, over half a million views on average per video. And one of the things I think that gets overlooked with YouTube is that if it's a platform where you're posting every week, and for the first seven to eight years, I was posting two videos a week, uh, and then for the last two years, I've been doing a video every week, and I'm pretty confident I've never missed a single week. In doing so, I think people don't think about all the things that happen in a normal life uh, that you try not to present on camera, like getting sunburned, for example. It's like, well, you know, obviously skin cancer is bad, but I also don't want to be this like blood red face on camera. So you have to, you know, keep up with that sort of thing. Um, I always get the flu, like I always get the flu. Uh, so, you know, just having to know that, hey, at some point I'm going to get the flu and yet I'm still going to try and put out a video that week. Uh, I had surgery. I have a terrible right so shoulder. I had surgery on my right shoulder and I was in a sling for four weeks. It was supposed to be six weeks, but I was in a sling for four weeks and it's like I still put out a video every single one of those weeks because I thought ahead of time, okay, I've got to plan out these videos. Um, and I don't think ever watching you'd be like, oh, like that dude can't use his right arm. Um, so it's, it's cool to, to, you know, behind the scenes, there's a lot going on, but on the outside, it looks like, oh, like this guy's just putting out a video every week and you don't even think twice about it. But I'm proud of the fact uh, that I've actually been able to do it over these past 10 years. Now, I thought about listing like all the different topics uh, that I've covered on this channel, but that's a bit silly to do, but it has been really cool. I mean, I've done everything starting from the tires, the wheels, the brakes, working your way through the suspension, all different types of suspension variants out there, uh, looking at differentials, drivetrains, all wheel drive, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, mid engine placement, you know, talking about all kinds of different engine topics, transmission topics, electric cars, electric car batteries electric car motors, um, and then also driving all kinds of really cool cars, experiencing all kinds of different things, talking about unique topics within this world of automotive engineering, getting to talk with all kinds of professional engineers within this world. It's been absolutely wild and all just kind of a result of this YouTube channel, which is just amazing. And one of the common questions I get, you know, when I'm speaking with people face to face is like, oh, like what's the coolest thing you've gotten to experience or drive or that kind of thing. Uh, and I usually always go back to the same experience which was flying in a Red Bull air race plane with Kirby Chambliss. It was absolutely insane. In competition, these planes are doing like 12 Gs. Um, in the plane we were flying in, we were maxing around, you know, 7 Gs, which is still insane and definitely close enough to get me to almost pass out. And then Kirby Chambliss would level the plane and he'd be like, Jason, you're all right? And I'd be like, uh and then he'd go right back into something insane. Um, so flying in that plane was just absolutely nuts. And one of the funny things about that story is that when I showed up to ride in the plane, there was a journalist laying on the ground and I was like, oh, like, what's up with this guy? Why is this guy laying on the ground? Is he okay? And they're like, oh, he just did his ride along. And I was like, oh, like, like when was his ride along? And they were like, an hour ago. This guy had been laying on the ground for an hour after this experience. That's how kind of wild and intense it is. And then, you know, in the real world, when this guy's actually flying this plane, Kirby Chambliss, like he's experiencing 12 Gs in competition. It's 
absolutely insane. So not even car related, but that's probably my wildest experience uh, as a result of Engineering Explained. Yeah, right now, immediately after getting out, oof, I just feel a little nauseous. <laughs> Now, over the years of running this channel, I've got to own what I think are some really cool cars. My first car was an Acura Integra, 1999 Acura Integra. I did a bunch of videos on it, a lot of project videos, learned a bunch, uh, and also had the car stolen, which wasn't that cool. Uh, next, I moved on to my first new car purchase, which was a 2014 Subaru WRX STI hatch. Absolutely love the way that thing looks. Um, I love the way that it sounds on paper, and I love its all-wheel drive system. And aside from that, I don't have super strong feelings about the uh, Subaru STI hatch. Uh, do love the way it looks. So from that, I moved on. I got a Subaru Crosstrek, which is the greatest vehicle of all time. Still have that. It's the longest I've owned any brand new car um, from buying it new, though I owned the Integra for maybe nine or 10 years. After buying the Crosstrek, I bought a 2002 Honda S2000, revs to 9,000 RPM. I did about 40 videos on this car, learned a ton, did all kinds of really cool testing with it, brakes, engine modifications, uh, like a supercharger, really cool vehicle. And then I added to the fleet a 2018 Tesla Model 3 mid-range, which I did not own for very long, about two weeks, and then I sold it back to Tesla, and instead got a 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance, uh, which I still have absolutely love I think it's one of the best daily drivers you can get it's absolutely phenomenal and then uh, I ended up selling my s2000 and then I bought another s2000 that's what we're sitting in right now uh, so a yellow supercharged s2000 uh, this time a root supercharger instead of a centrifugal supercharger which I like quite a bit more it's got a nice mid-range to it really fun absolutely love this 2016 uh, Mazda Miata and I think truthfully like as far as value-based garages go because I'm an engineer at heart and so I take value into consideration uh, value-based garage I think this is one of the perfect garages uh, perfect three car garages with the Tesla Model 3 performance uh, the 2016 Mazda MX-5 and the Subaru Crosstrek I can pretty much cover all of my needs uh, with this three car fleet and more than just needs it's it's a lot of just having fun really uh, with the Mazda and with the Tesla now one thing I do want to talk about which I feel there is just this connection between uh, is my channel engineering explain and the movie franchise my favorite movie franchise fast and furious uh, so I don't actually have any real connections to fast and furious uh, but I feel like there has been a link uh, and that started, you know, I always loved these movies. I, I, I kind of grew up, you know, going to theaters and seeing these movies. Um, I've been at most of them on opening night. I love the Fast and Furious movies. And actually, on November 30th, 2013, my channel hit 100,000 subscribers. So on November 30th, 2013, I threw a party and I had a projector uh, in my apartment that was going to be showing one of the Fast and Furious movies. I was really excited about it. Of course, you got to have Fast and Furious in the background during a party. And unfortunately, if you, if you remember your history, you remember people and dates and things like that, November 30th, 2013 was the day that Paul Walker died. Uh, and that really tore me up. I didn't end up showing the movie. Um, you know, it, it was, it, it really hurt me. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of silly because it's like, I don't actually know this person, but I, but I really enjoyed these movies. Um, and so, you know, having that linked with like the day that I hit 100,000, which is a major milestone on YouTube, it's the first reward they give you a silver play button when you hit 100,000. And then having that happen on that day was like, it was tough. I, you know, I, I feel for that family and for the people involved that knew him uh, personally. It, it just, it sucks, you know? But actually, as a result of this channel, I've gotten to meet some really cool people, including some of the people involved in the Fast and Furious world, uh, including even Cody Walker, Paul Walker's brother. So I've gotten to know him. He invited me to Fuel Fest down in Los Angeles. It was really cool to experience and hang out with him. Um, I've also gotten to meet Sung Kang, who played Han in Tokyo Drift. Um, incredible guy. Both of these guys, just incredible, warm people. Um, you feel like you're their friend the second you meet them. Just really great guys uh, that I've been able to meet because because of this channel, uh, which is really cool. And tying this all back to Fast and Furious, 
June 24th, 2021, the day my channel turns 10 years old, is the debut of Fast and Furious 9. Now, 10 and 9, okay, slightly different numbers, but technically, this is the 10th installment of the Fast and Furious franchise, if you include uh, the Hobbs and Shaw movie. So I'm very excited that I get to celebrate my 10-year anniversary by going to the midnight premiere uh, of Fast and Furious 9. I also want to touch on the YouTube algorithm because YouTube, of course, in the past 10 years has changed quite a bit. And so if I go back to my original videos, the title would be something very simple like carburetors explained. That was it. And the thumbnail was a photo of me sitting in front of a whiteboard like a dork, uh, still doing that today. Uh, but YouTube used to be this very subscriber friendly, very search friendly platform where most views came from subscribers and came from YouTube as a search platform. So you were looking up topics and then those topics would pop up and you would watch them. That changed quite a bit, and for me, I would say I noticed it the most around 2016. Uh, but basically, now the way that YouTube works is it's very homepage friendly rather than search based. So, most views, the vast majority of views, come from the homepage, not from people searching. At least this is true for my own content, even though I feel like my content's kind of this evergreen stuff where, you know, it's explaining how stuff works. Like, it's always relevant, um, but most views actually come from the homepage. So, you click youtube.com, it shows you a bunch of pictures and fun videos, you select which one you want to watch. That's how people watch videos now. And unfortunately, it means my old method of, you know, use this dorky photo of me in a simple title like Carburetors Explain, it just isn't competitive anymore because when that little crappy photo is put up next to all the flashy images that everybody likes to make and the fun titles that people like to make, it's not competitive. People don't click it. And so because people don't click it, YouTube doesn't recommend it and then it doesn't get any views, right? So you have to go into this new modern era of YouTube where the title is extremely important, the thumbnail is extremely important, the content obviously is important, but you really have to focus on those previous two more than you did previously uh, because that's how you remain relevant because that's how YouTube is, you know, getting views now. It's all through the homepage. So, you know, I used to not even edit my videos. I would literally chop the beginning, chop the end. I wouldn't even watch them. I just put them up uh, after, you know, trimming the beginning of end, everything done in one take. Um, and, and now it's a much more, you know, curated process because it's a much more competitive platform. So you got to up your game and I'm okay okay with that. Um, but definitely you have to change in order to remain relevant. And speaking of this relevancy, like around 2009, I was kind of getting burnt out on the platform. I had been doing two videos a week for about eight years. Um, and it's tough. It's tough to make two videos a week. I'm not saying like I have the hardest job in the world or anything like that. I'm very grateful for what I get to do. Uh, but after you do it for eight years straight, two videos a week, you know, it can take a little bit of a toll on you. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to cut back. Uh, and I'm going to switch to one video a week. So I did that in 2019, but I had a huge fear of irrelevancy, of becoming irrelevant because YouTube rewards quantity. YouTube rewards, you know, if you have a high output, YouTube likes that. YouTube likes to see you putting out content all the time. Um, so I was very scared to go down to that one a week and I was doing it for, you know, work-life balance reasons, uh, but in reality, what I ended up doing is, you know, just working more, making longer videos, including more information. Uh, so my actual amount of work didn't really change all that much. My output went down, uh, but not really based on time. The videos were longer and they included more information. Uh, but I, I was fearful of that change and actually it turned out people still watch my videos. So I'm, I'm very thankful that even though I dropped my output, people stuck around, they still watch the content, YouTube still recommended it because you're kind of at the mercy of this YouTube algorithm. I mean, if they decide they don't like you, like, that's it, goodbye. Um, you know, people say like, click the bell, uh, smash the like button, all that nonsense of subscribe. It's like, you're all adults, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, you can figure out what to do. You're, you're capable of clicking the buttons that you wanna click. Um, so I don't like telling people that kind of stuff. Uh, at the same time, it's like I'm completely at YouTube's mercy, right? And so those things are genuinely helpful if people do them. Uh, so yeah, it's this like battle of like, do you tell people this nonsense? Got something in my mouth. All of this is to say is that there was this fear of irrelevancy of, of changing the content output. And actually I'm going to change that again. And it's with the original goal of maintaining a good work-life balance, uh, which I don't feel like I do great at now. And so I'm going to test around with changing my output and probably going down to a video every other week. So one video per two weeks and probably changing from Wednesday to Friday. I like the idea of like, if I start working on a Monday, 
I need to have the video out by Friday. I like that mentality. Um, so I'm thinking about going to every other week and doing Fridays. And then there's probably going to be some random videos thrown in in between when there's like embargoed content, test drives, that sort of thing, uh, or just random things that I want to get out in a timely fashion. But that's what I'm looking at going towards. Now, I have to say, I, I absolutely love learning. I'm a very curious individual, um, and I love teaching things that I learn. And I think this is kind of a whole community of like-minded people that are very curious and they like learning. Uh, and, and I'm so thankful for this community. and I'm thankful for all of you. I hate saying things like my fans. It sounds like the most pretentious thing in the world to claim ownership over a bunch of independent people that watch all kinds of stuff, not just this channel. Uh, but to the audience out there uh, that is curious and that they have found, you know, things, they've learned things from these videos and they've enjoyed watching these videos, a tremendous thank you uh, for allowing me to have this very cool job, do very cool things, learn about very interesting stuff, um, all because you all are willing to watch it and share it and learn um, and discuss with me in the comments and correct me when I'm wrong. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like this hive mind where I actually get to learn a lot from you guys as well in return because if I ever say anything inaccurate, it's like very quickly it can be pointed out in the comments because if I post a video about you know a certain subject and 200,000 people watch that video well someone's gonna know that subject way better than I am within that group of 200,000 and so it's very it's cool that you have this community that like keeps you honest right it's like you have to be correct otherwise you get called out immediately I like that I think that's a really neat system and admittedly, it does start to feel really weird when you get to these big numbers, like, you know, the average video getting 600,000 views or, you know, 3 million subscribers or half a billion total channel views. It's like these numbers don't really mean anything to me anymore. Um, and it, and it kind of starts to feel robotic. You're like, is it real? Like, especially, you know, during this past pandemic where you're just sitting at home and it's like, are these numbers actually real? But when you go out into the real world and I, I see people and they come up to me and they say like, hey, like uh, you've got that whiteboard, engineering explained, like really love the channel like the the videos that you put out it's like there are real people watching this and it's a nice little reminder of like people actually do enjoy this and it's it's cool it's very cool um, and, and I'm grateful for this platform to be able to do it it's it's a fun really neat uh, thing that I get to call a job so I'm gonna close this in the same robotic fashion that I close all of my videos if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching